Hello everyone and welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 22nd, 28th, 2022. This is a week with a lot of changes and also the changes that have been initiated already in our lives up until this moment are deeply sinking in this moment. It would be almost like awaking from a very deep dream and reality hits but of course this doesn't necessarily have to mean anything negative not necessarily in a negative way but all of us we will definitely feel awakened from a current state the current state of that even makes sense now why exactly there is a lot of activity in the sky which promotes change and a shift of energy perspective, even emotional shift, and even the shift of our attention. So one of these energy shifts is Mars very, very, very freshly entered into the sign of Gemini at the very beginning of the week. So this is a really strong energy shift because we are speaking about Mars. We are speaking about our will. We are speaking about our focus, our energy, the planet of action ultimately, and in astrology, the activator. Now, why is this very important? Well, because Gemini is a very, very mental, intellectual, cerebral, uh, almost empirical, uh, hair-splitting energy. And we are getting more of that because the ruling planet of Gemini, Mercury, is in the sign of Virgo, in its home sign, in exaltation. So that strongly adds to the mental element, gaining a strong importance this week. And I'm just observing that the horoscope is a little bit too complicated. So here we have Mars in the sign of Gemini, and we are 22nd of August. So yes, and the Sun is nearing the end degrees of Leo. It's getting to an erratic degree, 29 degree of Leo, and starting to, of course, enter the Virgo segment. So, on one hand, this will take place on the 20 23rd of August, uh, 2022, and I would like to wish a very, very happy birthday and a very happy and blessed solar return to my soul sister, because on the 23rd of August, it is her birthday. She is one of the most beautiful Virgos I know in my life. So thank you for this. And yes, the sun entering the sign of Virgo makes the cerebral energy of Virgo, Mercury, Gem Mars and Gemini that much stronger. And unfortunately, as the sun enters the sign of Virgo, it will start holding a square with Mars. <clears throat> and this energy can be extraordinarily critical and also confusing, but confusing because of the details. Co the devil is truly right now in the details. Because the big picture might not be as confusing or the core of whatever it is that we're doing, especially Virgo season, problem solving, getting to the bottom of things. And getting to the bottom of things, we're getting close to Mercury retrograde season in the sign of Virgo. But first, Mercury will leave the sign of Virgo and enter Libra. So Mercury retrograde season will begin in Libra. We're not there yet, but it's already preparing the confusion part. So exactly where I'm going to go with this, that whatever descends into confusion, well, first of all, the clarity is going to be that much more revelatory when we get to the bottom of things towards the middle of the autumn. So October, in my opinion that could be a big moment of clarity. But even within this confusion that might be stirring, there is a lot of truth. Especially at the beginning of the week when the sun is in anoretic Leo. 
home sign of Leo. Our hearts truly know something. And when it goes into Virgo, that might be the moment when we start truly analyzing, thinking about the problems. Mars in Gemini, the square. We can also look at this, who it is that we have in our lives, Gemini, the other, someone else, that can either facilitate this, or who it is that holds the obstacle. Because the square, we have to find compromises, we have to find balance, we have to serve both our interest and a greater interest, or the interest of another, the interest of a partner, so things can get quite complicated. And at the same time, Mercury, and this is where I actually want to go here, Mercury in Virgo opposing Neptune. Now what does this mean? This means that we're truly seeing even the illusion for what it is. We might not necessarily see beyond it, but we do see it for what it is, so it starts, or better said, almost immediately, loses all power. Why? Mercury, this Mercury is trying in Pluto. And this Mercury, when it goes retrograde later on, it will rehold the trine with Pluto. So that means a lot of truth, empowerment, synchronicity. The divine power is also coming to our aid. But, the Mercury opposing Neptune energy is not very easy because it can be melancholic, it can be where Mercury feels totally drowned, totally defeated. When we want to go extra cerebral, all that is left is faith, Neptune. But, if we know how to trust, if we have a lot of life experience and wisdom within ourselves, Mercury in the sign of Virgo. Virgo can be seen as lived experience. So Virgo for a young person, the energy of Virgo could be very, very different expressed in a lived way than Virgo energy for um, a very experienced and mature person. Virgo is mutable and so is Gemini. Mars in the sign of Gemini. So again, who are people in our lives? Because people changed, we have changed confrontation. Does our changed version meet the requirements of the changed version of our, the other, Gemini? And in this way, understand this quantumly, a lot of relationships are going to balance themselves out. But Mars, it can be conflictual. It can be angry words. It can be criticism, it can be self-criticism. All of this can be very, very directed to the self as well. So if you don't have a big critic in your life, no problem, that's the self then. Understand it in this way. And the sun, the ego. So this is where you also listen to criticism, there's also wisdom in it. But you need to be a good manager of it. And ultimately, the worst part of this energy is the year splitting. That which doesn't work right now, Virgo, the energy of the lived now, leave it aside and do that which it works. Be selective. Use wisdom. Wisdom is like a lubricant for mental air energy. Gemini, Mars in Gemini, when we think we do a lot of, you know, I don't have to explain to you what Gemini energy manifests like out there. And then there is the strong Virgo energy. Wisdom, if lubricates this, the square is like a brainstorming. The square is one epiphany after another. Another uncomfortable energy to make this that much more urgent, a little bit anxious. And this energy is usually when reality starts hitting, but reality from within. Because Uranus stands still in the sky at the end, uh, sorry, beginning of the week, and then it starts retrograde on the 24th of August, and the retrograde goes into next year, 
because the end of the retrograde is 22nd of January 2023. 20, uh, so next year, early next year. So this means that from this moment, Uranus retrograde will be up and running all through this year. And that means we, it's embodied, it's that much more urgent. Understand Uranus retrograde when Uranus is activated so very strongly, when ants start attacking or something like that, those millions of little, little ants doing something, and people are those ants. Our brains, individual, Uranus, the planet of individualism, but coordinated, or maybe uncoordinated, but the revolution comes from within us. And it's a value system revolution. So this is where the economic patterns and the economic changes are also uh, caused or promoted or reacted by, by us, us people, our internally. Okay, that's one thing. And of course, I need to mention this, before Uranus goes retrograde, so the standstill period, when it's extra, extra close to the Earth in the sign of Taurus, Earth, Earth activity, seismic activity, so we can expect a lot of eruption, even symbolically political, financial, your own revolution in your life, sudden changes, light bulb moments, or your, the landscape of your life, changing, and this is where, from within, gets more important, gets more encouraged, if that even makes sense. So when Uranus is retrograde, the within and without meet. So that's when it really shakes. So this will add, and Uranus is truth, Uranus is cerebral, Uranus is not highly emo, it's cold. It doesn't have a heart. Taurus needs heart, so that's, <laughs> you see, this is where it's already a discomfort in itself. That we as well, individually and collectively, are going to be experiencing, sometimes even physically as well, a lot of anxiety, a lot of triggers. Yes, that's part of the deal, but... we the, And also the sun holds quincunx with Pluto. We need to figure things out. The heart knows things. Pluto, there is a sense of urgency. There is a sense of opportunity, but only with the heart. And how is that physical? How do we make that real? This is just a minor aspect, which I philosophize, really. But let's move on. This is the 23rd when the sun... On my chart, not yet, but the sun is going to be in the sign of Virgo. So, again, a very, very happy birthday month for Virgos out there, and a very happy, blessed solar return for Anka. So, um, this adds to the energy shift, because the square between Mar the sun and Mars already starts building up. It already starts, you know, energizing. So we will need to figure things out. And this Mercury still holds the trine to Pluto. Now, another energy here is Uranus. As I say, it is slowing. It is almost at a standstill. So the square it holds with Saturn retrograde as well, we're starting to feel the need for change, the need for liberty, the need to have at least a grip, a sense of our futures, of even what it is that we want that also helps. This sense of urgency is getting stronger, but things start to happen. So again, change is, the, is within us right now. So we will start slowly and surely taking action. And sometimes under this energy, even suddenly. 
another energy shift is going to be later on, where Mercury enters the sign of Libra on the 26th, but we're not there yet. Uh, where I want to go is actually 24th. To show you the Sun and the Mars square that is starting to get active. Um, the Sun is already comfortably in the sign of Virgo on the 24th. And this is where another power player comes online. This is Venus. Venus being at 15 degrees of the sign of uh, Leo. Starts speaking in a square formation with the North Node, and that also means with the South Node. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so actually, yeah, 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 I'm sorry, yeah, I, that's T-square, Venus T-square, the nodes. So, um, we're also going to be experiencing this, that very strongly, Leo, in the heart, as a sense of urgency. Where is it that we are on building our futures, the life changes that we need? Uh, how much of the old pattern, South Node and Scorpio, have we truly released? This can also be an emotional wake-up call, Venus Square, the South Node, of where are we on the journey? How clean is our life? How clean is, you know, karmically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically? physically, biologically. <laughs> For a lot of people, this is when they do blood tests and checkups, how clean they are, you know, Scorpio. But a check, so this is where the uncomfort already starts. The discomfort, yes. Um, and later on, Venus will also hold the square with Uranus. Not a very good week for romantic connections, I'll tell you that. But, a revolution of the heart, an awakening of the heart. Intellect meets the heart, Venus and Uranus. Both are rebellious in their nature. Even, you know, physically, the way the planets spin. They're very different from other planets, uh, even physically, so of course even in astrology, they're a little bit like the outsiders, they don't follow the rules, they don't follow our rules, that's 100%, and they speak in square so they trigger each other that much more. And also, you know, the ruling planet of Taurus is Venus, so she is that very much, you know, in discomfort a value system change, without a doubt, currency change, stock markets, etc. And also, we might be feeling like a creative tsunami, where we have all these ideas, where we feel that we can create, especially if you're an artist, or if you love so much, you would like to live, try out, experience so much, but immediately, the big picture, uh, takes you away from the small pleasures, perhaps, of life, Taurus. What is the big picture, the big world change that we're in, the big life changes, our work, uh, Uranus square, Saturn, a lot is going on at the same time. Even if your life is, like, totally stagnating, a lot of energies are within you, so you're still in the same boat as everyone. Uh, I'm just looking at... So, Uranus, on the 24th, now that we're here, is going retrograde. My chart doesn't show it yet. And 24th of August, and as I said, the retrograde ends on 22nd of January, 2023. And then moving on, on the 25th, actually, I think I want to show you something on 25th that the moon and Leo is going to conjunct right now it's conjuncting this dwarf planet Varuna then Ceres then Venus so the soul even our unconscious the waters of 
basically the soul are going to feel this very, very strongly. There is going to be a revolution taking place in our hearts. And the landscape of our relationships may change quickly, suddenly, even unexpectedly, where we are the promoters. Our feelings change. Not a very good week for any kind of rebellion in, in artistic sense or you undergo any kind of cosmetic change as an act of rebellion because no. But series also, what we eat, so we need to be careful with excesses and also what we feed to the heart with emotions on this day. Absolutely so. Let me just remove the planetoids and then move on to the 26th when, when we see that Mercury is in the sign of Libra. Mercury entered the sign of Libra. So this is a very strong energy shift because Libra, partnership, relationships, contracts, the others, and also Mercury movement. When we need to go to appointments, when we need to go to do this, that, and that, or begin the process, make calculations, make phone calls, this will be uh, like a celestial call to do these kind of matters. And because Mercury retrograde will be here in Mercury in shadow, well, that means that there might be delays or we might get the appointment which will be under Mercury retrograde. So things are getting done. And with this Mercury retrograde, be patient. Please be patient. Virgo, problem solving, things left from the, including paperwork, including medical visit, including this and that. I have to fix this item that I really need, but I have been neglecting, or the plumbing, or the door, or anything Virgo-like, you know, the rough refinery. But it, it's a big setup, you're getting there. But this is where, imagine how suggestive what that which is in your life is in the life of your partners, the same. So, okay, you have all this complication in your life, but imagine that you're a professional, you're a parent, you're someone in a quality. So you'll be the professional who will help others in their Mercury retrograde. So you can imagine how it interconnects, how it in, it's interwoven, and that means even synchronicity. So the fact that it's weird, it's unusual, you don't know what it means, you don't have anything figured out, especially to find it no problem don't have panic attack don't worry chill out don't think about it because it's getting there and partnerships right now if the confusion comes from partnerships trust is the process really but on the world stage on the world stage it's diplomacy and it's not a very, very easy energy because Mercury starts, of course, the square with Jupiter. And Mercury, at, you know, right now, in, in my chart, it's at zero degrees of Libra on the world stage, diplomatic expression. So international diplomacy. Jupiter in Aries, war, the multi-dimensional representations of the war because if you look at the war as a psychological warfare opinion warfare ideological warfare call it whatever you want that's also the case especially with ideology what you worldview aspirations that's also jupiter so yes, be patient because yes, it's complex, it's not easy, there is going to be ups and downs, but perhaps things are going to get done by the end of the, the year. So expect diplomatic activities, activities within courts of justice, big, big trials 
starting or speaking about it, the news, something hits the news, Mercury, on the world stage in Libra about this. So, big, big activities in courts of justice. Of course, that can also include disruption. <laughs> Break, disruption, uh, and something stops it, halts it. That can also be part of the deal because the Mercury retrograde will solve it. But something happens, at least, you know, and the other thing is Mars, not right now, but you'll see later on, will sextile Jupiter, so that's a really good saving grace, so to speak, because that gives, I'm just looking at my notes, that gives us a lot of power. Mars, sextile Jupiter, Jupiter that which needs to be completed, and that which is very important for the self. And Aries can also be seen as our direction, where we are heading. And that's important because Jupiter retrograde, things, getting things done. And then later on, if I'm not, I'm not really certain when, because my head is a bit of a mush right now, I'm also feeling this energy. It will go back to 29 degrees of Pisces, December, I think. But don't trust me on this. That's a big karmic completion. That's the last chance for something big to close, to complete, to heal, to resolve, to whatever in the time frame of the next 12 years. So, yeah. Something is brewing. So, we must also trust this process. And then let me go on on the twenty seventh, where we have a very important celestial activity, a new moon taking place in the sign of Virgo, and one of the main aspect of this new moon, as you can see it, four degrees of Virgo, the conjunction of the Sun and Moon, a square to Mars at four degrees of Gemini. Now a new moon, of course. Something new is taking place in our lives, or some us to create something new, or us to start a new chapter, by giving something up, for example, by elimination, is going to be part of our lives because this new moon will take place somewhere in your life as well, in an area of life. But, uh, you know, square with Mars, action. And this calls for meticulosity, like a surgical precision. And Gemini can represent your mental sphere, your mindset, what is truly taking place in your minds, what your thoughts are, even your everyday th thoughts. It can represent basically your plans, your calculations, what you speak. It can also represent what you're doing, because hands, Gemini is the hands, Mars action, fist fight. Now, you know, we, have, we also have Mars retrograde in the sign of Gemini, not yet. But Mars is preparing, and that will mean a lot of fist fight. But, symbolically, what does a fist fight mean? You're fighting for something important. Maybe it's the last resort, or maybe you're triggered, but it leads to a new beginning. But Mars, what you give is what you get especially under a square, especially, you know, Virgo energy. From a karmic perspective, Virgo is when you get it back to surgical precision. It's custom-tailored for you, whatever the karmic discharge is. But this can, this en we must take this energy as such. The good side, really good to truly work hard and complete something. If the big picture motivates you in the now, what it is that I can do right now. If the answer is nothing, 
Gemini prayer, speak some speak it into existence. There is still something that you can do mentally, even if if you can do something, then do it with great mastery, with precision, with the big goal motivating you. Don't try to be perfectionist because when we are having a hard time or we are having an emergency or urgency because this Mars can do that a lot Mercur mercurial square you know Virgo is mercurial Gemini is mercurial so you know what even if you do something minimalistic you're not proud of it it's not enough but you tried you tried that matters a lot when you're down. That minimal little effort that you did try and you got tired in the middle of it and it didn't got to be a good creation or whatever. <laughs> the action. But you still tried. Try. Try, 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 try. In anything. You're down. There is no light that you reach out. You reached out, you did something, and that gets you somewhere, always, especially under the square. But the bad thing to do is when you have too much power, Mars, too much on your hands, <laughs> Mars in Gemini, well, don't overdo it, don't burn yourself out, don't Create something new with excruciation. <clears throat> Sorry. What does that mean? Don't try hard. Trying when you're down is one thing. Trying hard when you're not down is another thing. If you're not down, then Virgo and Gemini work very, very well with balance, with a great purpose with a lot of spiritual or philosophical or moral even wisdom attached to whatever it is that you're solving, encouraging yourself, you being a good twin, or using every help that you can in a balanced way. Other people. Sometimes, you know, Virgo energy is when we have to offer the service. It might mean a sacrifice that we need to do. A continuous sacrifice, perhaps. New Moon and Virgo, you start supporting something, someone, start an activity, a charitable cause, a treatment, a uh, uh, Virgo routine change, detox, diet change, series. Please let me put on the asteroids to see if. Well, see, this is series. Series is here. And she holds a square with the North Node. The square is not yet very exact. But where I'm going with this, food. And maybe a potential food crisis, food shortage. But it can also mean a radical change in our diet. We give up on poisons substances that do not serve us we eat naturally and this reverberates in Taurus why e economically we start supporting the farmers the neighbors the friends who grow this and that the other friend that can do this and that but it's natural and we need so few of it little of it not much that little cup of honey or what Insert here whatever you would trade, really. Well, that is enough for you. And this is how things are forming. But before we get to the good side of this, we get to the bad side of this. So we can expect some disruptions. And as and I said, Virgo purifying. Sudden diet changes. So let me just take out the asteroids. Um... So this new moon in Virgo, and this can be very meticulous, this can be very strong. 
for example, the good side of the square with Mars. Let me give you a practical example. You want to quit smoking. That's so under. That's so this. Why? New moon. In Virgo, that's a new beginning for you. Because a lot of new things will replace smoking. And small Virgo-like things, daily habit things, maybe a tea. And you did, through the tea you discover an aroma, a plant, a friend, a shop, a place... But Mars is the sacrifice, because it's hard. Mars in Gemini can very well be, you do this with a smoking partner, you do this with a XYZ, insert your smoking friend, it's not temptation, it's not easy. Cutting out friends in order for you to quit smoking, now that's an act of cowardice, this is where excessively this energy can not do you anything good but in the right measure trying hard begging your friends to help you that's one thing but you know i'm not gonna meet with you three months from because i'm quitting smoking that's the bad part so use discernment here um but radically it can happen radically this is where you're a smoker one day, non-smoker, the next day Uranus, going retrograde. You find the strength. You rebel against the routine. You will rebel against the master that is the cigarette or insert here, whatever. And truly, whatever habit, whatever diet change, treatment you're going, that can be rebellious in the sense that you, you never done anything like that before or never to this extent. And Mars, this might need you to be very brave. Because Gemini feeds fire. Mars is fire, Gemini is air. It feeds. Bravery might be needed. Yes, I'm going to go to the dentist. I'm going to go to this. And Virgo is very much medical treatment as well. And it can be a healing energy. Why not? So, uh, look. This new moon also holds an inexact quincunx with Jupiter. Jupiter and Aries, courage. But, you know, don't overdo it. It can get, go, get, the right balance can get you to good places. The ruling planet of this new moon is Mercury. In Libra, balance. Good, following good advice and trying more than one solution orienting through yourself and everything that you do to problem-solving attitude. Look for the potential solution and program reality this way. This week is very important that we don't look at the problem and don't look at the impossible, I can't, uh, this, that, no, let's look at what we can do. Because it's a saving grace like that. Because under this new moon we can see some people with ingeniosity or with the right for ingenious friend or an alliance, Mars in Gemini, but an unusual alliance, as in, in uh, an, any other circumstance, maybe you would not meet or get allied or try something together, problem solution, brainstorm together, but you still do and that's an act of courage, Quincunx. And look, you apply knowledge, Jupiter and Aries, the head, wisdom, ingenuity, inven inventing it there and then, basically, with someone else, so this ally, and the problem solved. And who knows where it leads? Now, of course, Venus squaring, squared by... Uranus. Uranus right now retrograde on the 27th. Retrograde Uranus. Shock, surprises, unexpected, it's hard. We, you know, even when we try something new, it's not easy. It's weird. It feels weird. I was a smoker, now I'm not... And not... I'm using smoking as an example. Because that's so typical to Virgo season. Every year. Every year this happens. 
So, you know, I could just very well put this segment in next Virgo season's horoscope. Regardless of what aspects happen there, Virgo season and Pisces season usually is a really good quit season. So, yeah. And spiritually, psychologically, in any way, shape, and form, returning to purity, re washing of ourselves out, is really, really encouraged. But, Mars again in Gemini, the polarity, fanatically, in excess, getting lost in it, it will not, you won't do any service. Staying balanced, that's when you truly do it. This is the, the essence of the Mars square. Now, of course, the bad part of this is on the world stage. Virgo is the medical world as well, microbiology. Gemini, on the world stages, media, social media, the news, communication, that which is published, that which is circulating, not very good news, not very precise news, or a lot of I don't knows, or a lot of I'm working on it. If we add Jupiter into the configuration, legal cases, malpraxis cases, perhaps. But a certain cases will bring with them a lot of similar cases. So new beginnings and medical trial cases, perhaps, that were never been there before. But I don't want to put the emphasis on this. And also, um, Jupiter starts holding the sextile with uh, Mars much more intensely by the end of the week. And that's really good. Because Jupiter gives Mars the push, the strength, the direction, the instinct. This is where this Mars can make you a samurai, blindfold on, because, you know, you don't know a lot of things, and all, Uranus, retrograde, how do you solve the unsolvable with also a blindfold on? And then the instinct, the experience, Virgo, gets the job done, where the samurai blindfolded cuts the watermelon, or, you know, you name it. But that's where you can get into that kind of mastery. The trust, the willingness, the faith. It can do miracles. Where it is that you have a lack, need, fill it with faith, and not focus that, oh my god, I don't have it. Why? Because, oh my god, I don't have it, is not a good suggestion under Uranus square Saturn. Because I don't have it makes Saturn even more stressed. Because Saturn is the backbone, the structure. Saturn is that which needs to have certain minimal things in life, regardless of what that is. When there's a lack, well, Saturn feels that the most. And as I said, series squaring the North Node. So we can also expect some kind of food disruption. We can also expect some kind of food crisis. But the good part of this energy, again, Virgo and detox and diet set a new intention, a healing intention. And if your body, in order to enact that healing intention, wants to purify itself, because you can feel this urge, like a fruit diet, or to consume a lot of. And insert here whatever food you like, but not if it's processed, or anything very fancy. So, if you know what I mean. If it's processed, if it comes from restaurant, no. Chances are no. Why? Because self-love, you need to prepare it for yourself. Or if it's fresh, eating it fresh, that's already a ritualistic act of you consciously bringing life 
something living into your organism. So what life and eating life, consuming life, living with life means this week for a lot of people and especially this new moon can reveal. And also, what I would like to mention is that this new moon, like any new moon, can manifest over the course of the next six months. But imagine if it's something really, really beneficial, a very strong, positive health routine, or you falling in love, why not? Venus, Ilio, and the square to Uranus, falling in love with a plant, a food, a nutrient that you never ever had much love for and never ever really tried out, and now you discover it. And you say, where were you all my life? Or better said, why was I, why was I so silly all my life not to try you? And like, for example, I don't know, spinach. <laughs> this... The spinach has a lot of childhood kind of repulsion towards it. But when you're an adult, you would be shocked how it's not the same. This is just one example. Apply it in other ways. Where you fall in love with something healthy, something beneficial. Or Venus, a truth. A truth within you. You love who you don't love. What... This is where both the plus I love passionately, or I resonate with it on a heart level, or the minus, uh, sorry, no longer, I'm, I'm, I'm just not this. All, both are equally valuable, and both are equally motivational ultimately, because even that which doesn't resonate, you can just give it peace, rest. Thank you for being part of my life, but now I, we have to... But the knowledge of it stays with you, even if you part ways with customs, routines, things, people that you used to love. At a change of big change of heart, you can find it easy with no regrets to start something new. But, as I said, you're in a square. Just if it's something radical, random... If it's not part of your big picture, if it's not consolidating a big truth that you always knew within yourself, if it's something really weird, radical, random, then it's the opposite, so don't do it. Don't, like, want a leap of faith into something uncertain. Don't take big risks. Don't quit job just because right now you feel like it. No, 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 no. This is only that kind of do it or the consolidation of truth moment if it's something that's always been lingering there and right now it crystallizes it along with the other aspects. So it's not when, you know, we have a mental malfunction and like we just want to shave our heads. No, 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 not, not that kind of stuff. And... What else would I like to add to this horoscope is, yes, the Venus and Uranus square can add a lot of uncertainty as well into everything that we do, everything that is basically part of our lives. So, financially speaking, this might be a week when we really, really need to be careful. There might be opportunity, not even something expensive that we just know we could never afford is just there. And we have to really move quickly and accept it from fate because that's the plus side. But risking big or being very, very rigid and opposing change is not a good idea. Being resourceful, being diligent, being adaptable. But also, adaptable doesn't mean radically, slowly, surely, with patience, is the best course of action this week in everything that you do. 
And as I say, these energies are leading up to the autumn. So, and this Virgo new moon. This is really, really good, as I said, to get rid of energies, customs, substances that no longer serve you. And also to do the, all those duties that you have to yourself, to your physical body, in any way, shape, and form. So this is when the problem solving begins. So don't let the confusion that comes with it, and the uncertainty, and this trick of Mars that now, 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 urgently, you're behind. You don't have, don't let this fool you. Don't let this divert you off the track. Because later on, when Mars will navigate deeper into Gemini, it will hold the triangle with Saturn. It, you will be rewarded then. Be patient and try to contain yourself. Don't allow your nervous system to be on fire. Try to contain everything and in measure. And Lib Mercury and Libra is quite okay, quite good for that. But we need to also work with it, because it cannot do it on autopilot. And Mercury likes to do everything on autopilot, so we need to help it if that even makes sense. So thank you so very much for listening. Thank you for all the love, all the support, all the beautiful comments. And basically, thank you for keeping me alive. Until next time, bye for now.